Hello, this is Dr. A with your clinical chemistry re review video on blood urea nitrogen and creatinine. So BUN and creatinine test. Okay, so let's start with BUN. So um, BUN is a measurement of urea. And so urea is the end product of protein catabolism. So protein breakdown. Uh, urea is a non-protein nitrogenous compound that's present in the highest concentration in blood. Um, other NPNs are uh, creatinine and uric acid and ammonia. These are all considered like waste products, but the most abundant of all these waste products is urea. Um, and it's probably simply because it is related to protein catabolism and you, you can't you can't store protein. So protein, uh, it's also dependent on your intake and you know breakdown and metabolism of it and so since you're constantly taking some in there's constantly some being broken down there's just turnover and so urea is quite abundant as a waste product in comparison to the other ones um so it is the major excretory product of protein metabolism as i said it's like the waste if you will of protein metabolism uh and it is made in the liver from uh amino groups which again amino acids are building blocks of protein so that makes sense and free ammonia so the ammonia comes from the uh, nitrogenous group, which is part of amino acids. Remember, you have an amino acid and a, a nitrogen in. So um, most urea in the glomerular filtrate, which is glomerular fil filtrate is what will eventually become urine, uh, is excreted in the urine, but some of it is reabsorbed in the renal tubule. So there's a certain amount of waste that is reabsorbed back into uh, and put back into the blood. The BUN test is used to evaluate renal function, so how well your kidneys are working, but also hydration status, nitrogen balance, and adequacy of dialysis, and also aid in the diagnosis of renal disease. So um, hydration status is because um, you will see a relative increase in BUN because of the loss of water, so that can help, and BUN is very sensitive to that. Nitrogen balance, obviously, because uh, the blood urea nitrogen or your urea level is uh, intimately connected to your protein level. So uh, protein level uh, contributes greatly, of course, to nitrogen balance. Uh, positive nitrogen balance means you have more protein coming in than what's going out. And so you might be like building up muscles and stuff like that. And uh, if you have a negative nitrogen balance, it means you're wasting and using up more than what you're taking in. And so uh, a decreased glomerular function will increase the BUN. So because BUN being a waste product, if it cannot leave through the kidneys, uh, through, you know, as, as urine is made, then it will accumulate in the blood and increase to be the blood level of the urea nitrogen. There are a few laboratory methods to evaluate BUN. There's a couple enzymatic method using urease. There's a color uh, method. There's a conductometric uh, method, well, using electrodes. But then the reference method is isotope dilution mass spectrometry. Um, BUN can be measured in plasma serum or urine. Uh, plasma would require the lithium heparin or green top tube, serum a red top tube, or urine in a urine cup. Uh, in plasma, you have to avoid ammonium ions in high citrate and fluoride content. So your sodium citrate, which is your light blue top, and your sodium fluoride, which is your gray top, should be avoided. Uh, it is susceptible to bacterial decomposition, so you have to use quickly or refrigerate the specimen. This is especially true, obviously, for urine, because urine is likely to be contaminated with bacteria. Um, and then, uh, so we talked about urea, in, you know, metabolism urea and all that, but we are measuring blood urea nitrogen, so uh, we assessing urea by measuring the nitrogen content in blood, which is the way we assess it, but if you actually want to know the concentration of urea based on the blood urea nitrogen level, then you're going to take the BUN and you multiply it by 2.14. The reference intervals for blood urea nitrogen in adults in plasma or serum is 6 to 20 milligrams per dl or 2.1 to 7.1 millimoles per liter. In urine, uh, in a 24-hour urine, it's going to be 12 to 20 grams per day or uh, 0.43 to 0.7 mole of urea per day. Your uh, BUN levels do depend on the urea concentration, uh, which is related to protein intake and stuff. The glomerular filtration rate, which is related obviously to how well your kidneys function, and your hydration level. Um, uremia, uremia means um, 
or it is an indication that it's very high plasma urea concentration, usually seen with renal failure. And so you can see uremia, you can see like, oh, at least four to five times upper limit of normals with looking at BUN levels of like, you know, 60, 70, 80, 100 above. I've seen as high as 200. Azotemia is an elevated concentration of urea in the blood, but also of other non-protein nitrogenous compounds. So if uh, it's both the BUN and the creatinine that are elevated, then you you can refer to it as an azotemia. But uremia is, uremia is very, very high BUN. So there are several types of azotemias. There's pre-renal, renal, and post-renal, and they're um, each due to the um, pathology behind it. So pre-renal, before kidneys, right? Uh, means the problem is actually before the kidneys. So it's usually due to a decrease in renal blood flow, uh, conditions that can cause that are congestive heart failure, shock, so think of like massive blood loss or something like that, or the blood pressure is like really low, and dehydration, uh, loss of fluids, loss of volume and stuff. So there, um, there's going to be, um, blood flow is going to be limited to the kidneys. Renal isotemia, renal kidney, right? So it's a decreased renal function. And you see um, when the kidneys aren't working, there's a low glomerular infiltration rate. So therefore, since there's less urine produced, there's going to be less urea excreted in the urine and it will back up into the blood. And then you have post-renal uh, isotemia, so that is, uh, again, after the kidney. The problem is not really in the kidney itself, and, and so it's after urine formation, and it's usually due to an obstruction in the flow of urine, so the urine can't leave, and therefore products and things will back up and back up into the bloodstream. So uh, causes are usually tumors and stones, which are two most common causes of post-renal isotemia. Our second test for renal function is creatinine. So creatine is synthesized mainly in the liver and is made from arginine, glycine, and methionine. Uh, it is then transported to other tissue where it's used, and it is uh, converted first to creatine phosphate, which is its usable form, and creatine phosphate is a storage form of ATP, and ATP is your high-energy molecule. So, uh, especially in muscle, that is how you, you store up ATP as creatine phosphate, and then when you need energy, creatine phosphate will donate that uh, phosphorus back to ATP and then you can use ATP to power your muscles when you're doing exercises and stuff. Creatinine is formed from the creatine and crea creatine phosphate in muscle so it is a waste product so as uh, creatine and creatine phosphate are broken used up and broken down they are excreted as creatinine and um, the the rate of excretion of creatinine is uh, related to muscle mass. Uh, meaning the the more muscle mass you have, the higher your baseline of creatinine is going to be. Plasma creatinine is inversely related to glomerular filtration rate. So then it's com commonly used to assess renal filtration function. So you use it to assess kidney function. And so if your kidney function is uh, low or it's not good, then your uh, creatinine level is going to be high. So uh, to me the measurement of creatinine concentration is used to determine the sufficiency of kidney function. So seeing how your kidneys are working, uh, assess the severity, severity of kidney damage, if, especially if you had an acute kidney injury, and to monitor the progress of kidney disease. There are several laboratory methods used to measure creatinine. The Jaffe reaction is the oldest. And uh, in this method, creatinine reacts with picric acid to form a red-orange chromogen. It's old method, um, and so we found a better way, and that's the kinetic Jaffe method. It is rapid and expensive and easy to perform. And in that method, the serum is mixed with alkaline picrate, and the rate of change in absorbance is measured. So there is a color reaction involvement in that too. There uh, is also a coupled enzymatic method that has improved specificity, and your reference method is isotope dilution mass spectrometry. The specimen requirements um, for um, creatinine, you can use plasma serum or urine. For plasma, you want your green top lithium heparin for serum, you want your red top, and urine, just urine cup. You do want to avoid hemolyzed or enteric blood samples. So uh, that's enteric is, is related to jaundice, right? So any hemolyzed would be uh, broken up red cells. So no hemolysis, no bacteria. 
uh, the specimen may be refrigerated for four days. If any longer than four days, just you should freeze the specimen. Uh, sources of error in creatinine measurements. So ascorbate, which is vitamin C, ascorbic acid, right? Glucose, alpha keto acids, or like ketones, right? And uric acids can all increase creatinine concentration if it's measured by the Jaffe reaction. Uh, and some of these will increase it also within the enzymatic methods. Bilirubin can cause a negative bias, so uh, cause it to be lower in both the Jaffe and the enzymatic methods. And uh, patient use of the cephalosporin types of antibiotics, dopamine, and lidocaine should be noted because these medications can also interfere with the analytical reactions. Your reference intervals for creatinine uh, in plasma or serum in milligrams per deciliter um, for the Jaffe method is 0.9 to 1.3, for the enzymatic method is 0.6 to 1.1. So obviously just always go by what um, is on the report for your lab from your laboratory. And for females, uh, so as you note, females, their levels are going to be slightly lower because they usually have lower muscle mass than the males. So it's going to be 0.6 to 1.1 and 0.5 to 0.8. And then for child children, having less muscle mass than even than women of course so 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 for a child uh, in the Jaffe method and uh, in the enzymatic method 0, 0.0 to 0 0.6 this is all in milligrams per deciliter for uh, 24 hour urine uh, in milligrams per day uh, for an adult 800 to 2000 milligrams per day and for a female uh, 600 to 1800 again the males would uh, expect to excrete more because they have higher muscle mass than the females so always but always take that in consideration because if you have a, a small male that has the muscle mass basically of a female then you would almost expect it to have uh, then just lower levels here and here and so elevated creatinine is associated with abnormal renal function, especially as it relates to glomerular function. Uh, when plasma creatinine is elevated, the glomerular filtration rate is going to be decreased, indicated renal, indicating renal damage. So uh, in this one, creatinine is not so much influenced by hydration status as BUN is. And so oftentimes we look at them together. Uh, creatinine can also be used to calculate creatinine, creatinine clearance. So uh, a 20, a, it requires 24 hour urine and also one sample of serum uh, to, with a creatinine level measured on it. Usually that blood sample is taken sometime during the 24 hours that the urine is being collected in. Uh, there could be collection issues with uh, the 24-hour urine. So you have to, for example, uh, your patient needs to empty their bladder and you start your timer on an empty bladder. And then you have to collect absolutely every drop of urine that they produce for the next 24 hours. And so sometimes uh, well-meaning family members could empty your urinal and stuff like that. And so urine can be discarded. And if that's the case, the whole thing has to be started over. Um, and so it also has to be like kept on ice and properly, uh, properly preserved for the 24 hours. Uh, the creatinine clearance uh, calculation is useful for approximating the, the glomerular filtration rate, which then can give you an indication of kidney function. So uh, the, the formula is uh, the urine uh, creatinine times the urine volume here divided by the plasma creatinine times 1.73 square meters and then uh, their body surface area in square meters, which this you can obtain usually with some calculations with by using their height and uh, body weight and stuff. And then that gives you the creatinine clearance is in milliliters per minute per this is normalized, uh, you know, body surface area. And uh, also for the creatinine clearance, usually um, greater than 125 milligrams uh, is normal and per day and uh, anything like lower and we start going lower than that. So low numbers for the GFR is not good. High numbers is normal. All right, so let's look at the BUN creatinine ratio. So um, it is often uh, reported on panels or if you, if you order both the BUN and the creatinine, both tests are present and a BUN and creatinine ratio is going to be calculated. Uh, a normal BUN to creatinine ratio is anywhere from 10 to one to 20 to one. 
uh, and in deinterpretation, it's it's used to assess whether you ha you're having renal, prerenal, or postrenal isotemia, which I just defined a few slides over. So, uh, with renal isotemia, which is uh, a problem with kidney function, you will see a normal ratio, but you will see high levels of both BUN and creatinine. So, there both BUN and creatinine are elevated because the kidney function is compromised, but they're proportionately elevated and therefore their ratio stays the same okay so with prerenal azotemia so that one was usually from lack of blood flow to the kidneys or dehydration congestive heart failure etc the ratio is always going to be greater than 20 to 1 and uh, oftentimes with normal creatinine and so if you have an elevated BUN creatinine ratio then you need to think prerenal azotemia likely indicates dehydration or congestive heart failure. You have to go into the patient history to figure that out. And then the post-renal azotemia, the ratio can be greater than 20 to, uh, to 1, but you also have an increased creatinine. Uh, so post-renal azotemia was uh, obstruction of urine blood flow due to a stone or due to a tumors, which usually you can do imaging to determine that. So there you go. So those are the interpretation of urine creatinine ratio. That is the end of my video. Thank you.